Let's bring you that exclusive interview with former Vice President Pakwesi Emiza Arthur now this morning on News Desk. He touched on corruption and speaks on Martin Amidu's appointment as special prosecutor. He was speaking to our MFA Apau. Just joined us. Uh, this is Joy News from Multi TV, and we have a special edition with the former Vice President, Mr. Pisi Emisa Arthur. Uh, we'll be wrapping up shortly, but uh, let's talk about the Auditor General because there was an issue about the NDC or the, the your government left behind the seven billion in payments that was supposed to be given to contractors at the various MDAs, and it looks like some of them were overpaid and claims they, they were paid and claims were made again on the government and it, it came up to seven billion that you left behind. The Auditor General was commissioned to look into the amount that we had to pay these contractors. It came up that 5.4 billion out of the amount was disallowed by the Auditor General. Some members of your government have questioned uh, the work done by the Auditor General. But what's your take on this? I haven't read the no, report, so no, I, I, we, we, I'm not we did not look to. No, no, I, I, I responded. The issues of process have been raised by the former speaker, mm -hmm. um, the Right Honorable Dua Jahu. Yeah. So I think that every time an individual makes a judgment, which is supposed to go to some other place for people to then assess, you need to allow the system to make that assessment before. Now it's like. Um, the prosecutor has put his statement out and the people who are accused haven't had an opportunity to respond. Mm -hmm. So Parliament is the arbiter in this matter and should have been allowed to do that. But no matter what it is, I think that the Auditor General too, maybe to, to <laughs> I know him um, quite well, uh, was also anxious that over the years reports have been written and no actions have been taken. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the people of Ghana worrying. are worrying for him. So he wants to resolve it in a certain way. I think that maybe the way he wants to resolve it is maybe not the most appropriate way of resolving it. Including asking for prosecutorial powers? I, I don't know. You know, the, the, the prosecution is such a technical thing, especially in the financial area, that you, you need to have a lot of people. I don't know whether the Auditor General has enough financial analysts and accountants and so on, which is supposed to be the thing, this is the main basic qualification for, for his place. To go and ask for now lawyers to do prosecution, so I don't know whether you leave the, the thing to the, to the, to the um, attorney general to prosecute. But, but that, that, that concern is also something that a lot of people have, have, have um, expressed a view on. For me, Part of this thing is how a whole party can be brushed with corruption when maybe there are individuals who were who were who are guilty. Individuals whether in the party or individuals within the financial system, the, the MDAs and so on. But suddenly it's like because it happened in 2016 is the NDC that mm -hmm. is into it. I, 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 I reject Why? that kind of that's, that's your It happened in our under tenure, tenure. Under your tenure. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that everything that happened under the tenure was, was superintended by our, our people. No minister ever signs a check. Mm -hmm. So but some they people. They authorize for payment. Yes, but there, there's quite a number of, um, of authorizations that are done by chief directors and so on, line directors, which the the but the, the, the person stops with the, the back stops them. But when it's a crime, it doesn't say back stops. The crime is attributed to the person who has done the the criminal act, not the supervisor who failed to see. Maybe you can also charge him with failure to recognize that something was going on. But I think the primary responsibility is to the person who has done the thing. But in this case, all of us, those of us who are sitting in Flagstaff House didn't have any idea about the things that are going, we have all been brushed with this. And that's the one that I reject. The Auditor General knows the people who are complicit and he should go after them. But they should go to the Public Accounts Committee and resolve it and after that, they should take action against it. The action that needs to be taken is different from the 
prosecutorial powers because as the former speaker said when I, I saw him on TV yesterday, mm -hmm. there are many instances where the charge that has been made in the report when it comes to the um, Public Accounts Committee then is varied. It's different and they find that people are not guilty who have been made guilty and so on. So I say that, look, for one person who is not guilty to be, to be so made guilty, maybe it's, uh, it's, it's, it's too much for that individual. So that's, 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 that's how, you know. I think the Auditor General um, is doing a good job. He has raised the issues at a very high national level, mm -hmm. and it is good. We all need to find ways in which we can create a system that protects the public best. Mm -hmm. And so he's, he's, done, he's doing well. Well, but this issue about an assessment of ministers under this um, administration. I'm sure on Monday we're told that the president will be assessing all his ministers. It's a face-to-face -face evaluation uh, such that it would, follow, it would be followed by a reshuffle. Uh, was that what pertained under your tenure? Every, every president has his way of making, making the assessments. Well, principle? I don't know whether there's going to be any value. In it. The president in uh, Parliament House yesterday, he made an assessment of many of the ministers and gave them A pluses. So this assessment means that those people, well, so it means that uh, assessment is going to be those who were not assessed in the, in the, in the uh, sauna yesterday. So they are in trouble. I'm told every minister will be assessed. Well, I don't, I don't know about their system and so on, but there, 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 there are ways in which assessments are made. Sometimes they are informal ways the president will call his um, close um, advisors and then raise an issue about a minister and saying that for this reason I'm going to um, shift him aside, shift her aside and so on. Yes, it happened in our time, but the formal way in which maybe there's um, a checklist of things and so on, no, we didn't, we didn't have that. But maybe the president had it in his, in his study, but I didn't... I didn't but maybe he uh, said, which minister should go, which minister should stay? You know, there are so many of them that it's, it's, it's difficult to say. I don't have any, any, any way of making an assessment of them. Minister for Sanitation, for instance, what is would be your assessment? He's my friend, so I can't, I can't take him. Should he stay? <laughs> Joada is my friend, so... Should he stay? <laughs> I don't know. Should Howard Thompson stay? I don't know enough about them to be... Especially the initiatives, we are told. You should look the, I know the ministers, I, some of them, of them including yeah, deputies. deputies and regional ministers mm -hmm. and so on. I, I know quite a number of them, I've, I've dealt with a number of them, I know that they are capable, but I'm not able to say whether in this current position they've done well or not, and, and mm -hmm. I, don't, I think that not I'm not ab absolutely unable to, to say anything. Are you terrified by the appointment of Martina Mido as special prosecutor? Oh no, not at all. You know, I, I, I've known I've known Mr. Amidu from our days in the in the in the PNDC government. He was he was in very many positions. He was uh, I remember that when he was deputy minister for industry, science, and technology, we we worked very very closely. And then he became deputy attorney general, and then he was also the public accounts review board. He was a he's a very he's a very um, meticulous mm -hmm. person, and um, he loves Ghana. And uh, he's, he's, he's independent, and um, I have, I have, I know that if he, if anybody can make this work, Martin should make it work. And you know he's criticised your party heavily, and I'm sure most people are saying that he will come after uh, members of your party, your government, I should say, who were uh, corrupt. Uh, you, you don't, you think he will be a bit lenient with you? You think he would still do his job? He doesn't do you have to be saying? lenient. I think that he will do a good job. Mm. If, if I know him from his past, he'll do a good job. The thing I don't like about the way the public narrative has gone mm -hmm. is that, oh, he's, he's going to go after. Yes. I don't, I don't oh, believe, I, I don't believe yeah, that he's going to, he'll, well, people are speculating about it. I, I, don't, I don't know enough law to be able to say whether He's, he can do that, whether he will do that. I haven't, I haven't seen him for quite some time, for more than two, three years, so I don't know what his current thinking is. But if I know him as a principled person, mm -hmm. I know he'll do a good job. But I also don't think that 
the, the way in which the narrative that the NDC is corrupt, mm -hmm. it is not true. There are many, many, many people within our party who are clean. So if they find one or two people who did things wrong and they want to, to uh, punish them, I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. But they can't say that an entire political party is corrupt. I, I think that is a wrong. Because the, the president vouched for his appointees, saying my ministers are not corrupt. Can you say same for those who are No, we'll wait for the, the end of their term in office and then we'll de decide that. Even as they're in office, there are many issues that they are not able to respond properly. Mm -hmm. The minority had a report on this cash for seats, mm -hmm. which raises fundamental issues, which are glossed over in the majority report. That's right. Because they did not submit it, we're told. Well, I have read it, mm -hmm. but even if it's not submitted, and you have read it, you say that there are concerns that they've expressed, incorporate it in the report and say that they've, I, I, I recognize this problem. But that's in discipline, we are told, that the committee is put together, you have to work as a team, not a minority report and a majority report. I asked the Honorable Aviji, mm -hmm. permission had been granted by the hierarchy in parliament for him to travel. Now that is used as an excuse for, uh, as a, uh, for his not um, participating in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that it is only when the lizard is there that you can measure the, the, the length. So it, in this country, it's only when the government has given up power that then accusations come. And I'm saying that therefore, for the, for the NPP administration, that also will be the test. But I say that let the system develop to the point where if people have done things, they are blamed for their actions or inactions and not tie a whole political party with this. Because I know many people in the NDC who did not participate in anything mm -hmm. at all in the, in the way the NDC the, Are you hopeful that no member of the previous administration will be jailed at the end of this, uh, you know, the tenure of the MPP? Sorry, as that, as I'm, that saying question, that, I'm saying, I, I'm saying, are you hopeful that no appointee, because you're saying that most of them are not corrupt? Maybe. An overwhelming majority are not. Are not. Yes. So you're sure that no member of the previous administration will be jailed at the end of it? Or? I don't have the information that they have. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying that in my view, there are many people who I work with who are strong, upstanding members of society who did a fantastic job, who didn't cut any corners, and who come out clean when they're investigated. Mm. And so that's where, that's where I am. Finally, do you miss being Vice President of the Republic of Ghana? If you ask my grandchildren, they are so happy. So I happy can go, so happy. I go to school and pick them up, mm -hmm. and they can, they can, they can, they can um, find time, I, I find time for them, so, yeah. But sometimes I miss, I miss the, position because I can see needless errors that are made that should really not 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 having made and mm. therefore I I say that oh, I wish that we could be there to 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 correct this this one. But it's now time for business on news desk with Emmanuel Abajiriafi. Stay with us.